Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video um, with the ZX9R on Project Shinobi. Now what I intend to do in this video is get the cylinder head off um, entirely and very possibly even strip down. I'll take all the valves out and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, uh, what I've done is obviously taken the camshafts out in the last episode and um, where the engine sits currently now is where you would be if you were to um, shim the any earth valve clearances. If you checked them, found any out of spec, this is where you would be now. You could then fit shims, um, refit the cams, chain, all that good stuff, and then yeah, you'd be, you'd be back in. Um, but obviously we're tearing this engine down uh, completely. So um, without further ado, let's uh, let's get amongst it. Okay, before we uh, before we actually pull the head off, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the um, a little uh, rubber inlet, little rubber inlet flanges off, and they're just held in with a with a couple of um, Allen headed bolts. So I'll pop all of them off. Take these Jubilee clips. Off. I'm not sure that they're I'm not sure that those Jubilee clips are actually um, stuck. Um, I have to have a look at a parts fish and uh, and see because if they're not stopped, then I'll replace them with the correct part. These are all coming out quite nicely so far. For some reason, that one's all full of copper slip. I have no idea why. And there we go. Right, so. Whip them all out. Now this one here has this little has this little um, cable clamp and it's holding the uh, timing chain up. Now it doesn't really matter about the timing chain too much because we're pulling it apart anyway. So uh, if it falls down, I'm not going to lose sleep about it. all of them. And there we go. Right, that's all the bolts. Jubilee clips. Stick them into uh, another tub. Obviously I'll label that up in a moment. Now if we pull these off, they've got like a little, there's like a little o-ring inside there and they're probably going to need replacing. But the actual Inlet rubbers themselves are quite nice and soft. Um, sometimes these like to go a little bit brittle and plasticky, um, but these ones are good, so I'm happy um, to reuse these. And then obviously I'll just replace the O-rings. And there we go. Right, we stick all of them down there, and I'll sort them out later on. Okay, on the back of the back of the cylinder head, we've got the um, thermostat housing, and they're 10 mil, aren't they? Let's get a 10 mil. Just crack all of them off. Um, I'll put a new thermostat on when I rebuild. Probably be a false economy to scrimp on that. Because um, again, once it's uh, 
once it's all assembled the bike's up running you have to strip half the fuel tank off and all that sort of stuff you'll have to take the carbs off and all that kind of thing just to get this bad boy again so i'll replace that with a brand new one as well come on once it's full of it this one's a little bit stiffer than all the others Look at, I mean, look at that. It's absolutely bogging. And there's a fair heap of corrosion inside there and sediment. Um, obviously, we can give all of that a good clean out. Um, the, uh, the housing itself, that'll clean up. Um, uh, I'll give that a good blast and a paint and that'll look brand new. Um, and obviously, there's a seal in there as well, which we'll need replacing as well. Okay, so... There's a couple of little, you know, like the sensors and what have you. We'll, we'll leave all of them for the moment. The, uh, the, the, you know, the ports for the carbs, we'll leave those. Right, what I want to do next is um, remove the, um, the lifters from the top of the valves. Okay, let's, uh, let's start um, with removing some of the parts from the cylinder head. We're going to start with the lifters. Now, what I've got here, I've got a little box and... Um, this is basically just a storage box. Um, there's a, what you can see inside here. Um, they've got little dividers in, um, all of them have. Um, and what I've done, I've taken the liberty of numbering them. You'll see I1 to 8 and then E1 to 8. Now, um, I'm fairly sure the, uh, that you guys can figure out what's going off here. Um, exhaust and inlet uh, 1 to 8. Now, this is cylinder one. Cylinder one is at the timing chain end, um, cylinder four here. So, exhaust one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inlet one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see where I've gone with this. Um, and then what that will do is that will enable us to put them back into the uh, correct location when we come to reassemble because you don't want to mix these up because obviously all of these components wear together and need to stay together um, later on. Obviously, things like the valves and all that good stuff, we will be checking, uh, we will be checking everything um, to make sure that it's within the service limit. Anything that is outside the service limit will obviously get replaced with a brand new item. So anyway, uh, moving on, we'll start with the exhaust. So I've got my little magnet here. Here is the lifter from exhaust one. Um, well, so obviously this is the exhaust uh, the two exhaust valves on cylinder one but this is going to be one that's going to be two um, inside there there will be a little shim um, when these are new they have a little number on you could you could see um, the edges of the number were on there but they've obviously worn off um, we can measure that with a micrometer so we'll do that later so exhaust one exhaust two and so on and so on uh, three and four so what i'm going to do i'm going to pull all the lifters out of their respective locations pop them into my little box and then i'll bring it in right at the end and then we'll be in a position to pull the cylinder head off the uh, off of the engine. Right then, okay. So we've got all the lifters out into their respective um, sections in the uh, in the tubs, and what we're going to do now is we're going to look at getting the cylinder head off. So. Um, before we do that, what we need to do is a couple of little things. We need to first remove um, the chain guide. So if we come in here, down there, we've got this, we've got this chain guide right at the front here, it's plastic. Um, that needs to come out uh, and it sits right down here in this, little, in this little casting mark just there. And if I get a pair of pliers and just 
and give it a little tug you'll see it you'll see it move there we go so it moved just a little bit there you can see you can see how it moves so what we need to do is we need to pull it up so it comes out of this little casting which we can do there we go so it's come out now in order to get it out what we've got to do is we've got to turn it 90 degrees uh, clockwise basically and what that'll do um, there's a couple of little uh, protrusions on the side of it um, that will interfere with parts of the, uh, the the block and prevent it coming out unless we turn it so if we get our pliers on it get hold of it and it's quite difficult but more than doable there we go and there's what i was on about there's that little protrusion there sits down in a there's like a there's a casting that sticks out um i'm not sure if you can see it on the camera or not just at the front down there um and if we hadn't twisted it you would never get it out so we'll um that's in decent condition anyway there's absolutely nothing wrong with that it looks good um there's no damage to it so that can go to one side uh, and we'll probably use that when we uh, come to reassemble okay so um the other the other um chain guide we will leave and the chain i'm just going to drop down like like so we don't need to uh, worry about the chain okay so now what we've got is we've got um 10 cylinder head bolts um under here under underneath the cam cover we've got the two on the end now the two on the end are the first ones that come out and yeah no there these ones aren't very tight they should come out fairly easily there we go now these go all the way down through the barrels um into here into the upper crankcase on them but they'll be okay and there we go there's the other one so that's them two out now what we uh, need to do on the cylinder head bolts themselves is they need to come out in a certain order now if we look here um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So there's ten of them all together. But if we look just here, we can see um, near each of the bolts, there's a little number cast into the cylinder head. And that is the number, the, the tightening sequence, basically, for, uh, for each one. So in the middle here, you can see one, and two, uh, three, four, five, six, um, seven and eight nine and ten now when we take it off they have to be undone in the opposite way so we start at ten nine eight seven six five four three two one and so on so what i'll do i'll um get the tools i need out and we'll start getting the uh, getting the head bolts out right um i've got a set of these these Allen bits in there, they're excellent. This is an eight mil because that's what we require for the turn of the heads. And I've got a decent sized breaker bar. Now, it may seem a little bit excessive for the breaker bar because these turn of the head bolts aren't massively tight, but um, you know, they've been in there a little while. Now, the turn of the head bolts on this are, I think it's tightened down in a two stage tightening sequence. And I believe the first stage is somewhere in the region of around 20 newton meters, um, bolts one to 10. And then a second pass uh, up to, I think it's I think it's 44 newton meters. I'd, I'd have to check the manual um, to uh, to be certain. Now, as I said a moment ago, um, we need to start at number 10 and then work down to one. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to crack them all off and we're going to undo them in like basically like quarter turn increments. Um, we'll have to obviously back them off with the breaker bar for the first pass, but then I'll probably be able to get the ratchet out first for the next quarter turns but um what i didn't do uh, a second ago is i didn't explain the reason why we're um doing it in this order now the reason why is because the cylinder head is torqued down in this sequence 
to ensure that it snugs down and it, keep, it remains flat. If we were to just back out all the bolts, there's potential for us to cause harm to the cylinder head and it could warp, um, and that will require um, extra shop uh, shop time in order to flatten it out and all that sort of stuff. Now, um, there is a possibility that the cylinder head gasket actually has gone on this. We'll find out in a moment once we get it off, um, because there is evidence of oil uh, and water mixing, um, but that's not necessarily um, a head gasket problem that could be the oil cooler and all that sort of stuff because obviously um, they, uh, the, the, the oil is cooled um, by the oil cooler and there are seals in there and if they, they perish they can um, allow mixing but um, I don't know for sure whether that was the case. Right so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to back them off with the breaker bar quarter turn at a time we'll start with number 10 so obviously I've got to hold it here give it a good Tug, there we go, quarter turn, then bolt number nine. And this, yeah, this breaker bar's making light work of these. So then that's nine. Eight. sure that she doesn't fall off my blocks. Seven. Then six is here. Six. Five. And then obviously four, three, two, and one. So you get the idea. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna carry on with that. I'm gonna uh, go to four next. Exactly the same as before, quarter turns. And then what I'll do, I will then switch to my ratchet and I will back each one out a quarter of a turn until they're all out. And then I'll bring it back. Okay, so um, I've got all the head bolts backed out and here they go. So we can remove all of them. Um, on a lot of engines, head bolts are a one-shot deal because they're, they're stretch, stretch bolts. Um, I'm not 100% sure whether that's the case on this engine, I would have to look in the manual. If the manual says that they are to be replaced, then I will replace them. Uh, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to replace them. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to refit them if the manual advises otherwise. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find that out when it comes to reassembly. Okay, so um, the cylinder head may well be stuck to the... Uh, may, may, but may well be stuck um, because it's been on here a little while. I'll give it a little... Oh, feels like it's moving, feels good. And there we go. Um, what I'll do, I'll pop it down there like so. Now, as um, you saw there, a little washer fell out. There is a washer on each of the head, um, each of the head bolts. But I will recover that in a second. And what we can see here, is a pipe now this is an oil just an oil pipe um, and there is an o-ring at each end of that so we'll recover that stick that down there now let's have a look at this gasket and see if there's any obvious signs uh, to be fair there doesn't appear to be it looks okay uh, you can see there's a lot of gunge 
all of this, all of this rusty mess. Um, you can hear, you can hear all the washers dropping off uh, inside the cylinder head. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't appear to have blown between the cylinders, um, and it doesn't appear to be, uh, there doesn't appear to be anything wrong between any of the oil weights or the uh, or the water jacket. Um, so yeah, uh, it looks it looks okay. Anyway, obviously we'll be fitting a new one on reassembly. Now here we can see the uh, tops of the pistons, and yeah, they look okay. The the bores, um, if we get a torch, we can see the bores look pretty good. In fact, you can still see home marks, um, which is pretty. Uh, you can still see hone marks, which surprises me. Um, now, one thing to note, if you were just doing a head gasket replacement here, um, if you disturb the, uh, the disturb the barrels at all, there is a gasket under here called the base gasket, um, and that goes between the barrels and the uh, upper crankcase. Now, if we were to disturb this, um, then that, that gasket would need to be replaced as well. Um, so if, if you were just doing a head gasket job, um, leave that as it is and it should be okay. Um, but obviously we are going to be removing it. Now, um, I'll leave that for the moment because what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to concentrate on the cylinder head. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to remove all of the valves. So, um, let me get all of the washers recovered. And then I'll bring you back and we'll start stripping the valves out of the head. Okay, right, I've hit a little bit of a stumbling block. And that stumbling block is that um, my, basically my uh, valve tool, which I've put down somewhere, there it is, is far too big. Um, this is massive compared to the uh, valve retainers on this cylinder head, so I'm not gonna be able to use it. So what I'm gonna have to do when it comes to reassembly, uh, I'm gonna have to get a, another one. Um, but there is a little trick you can do in order to get the um, get them out uh, without a um, without a uh, without at all. But obviously this won't work to get them back in again. Um, you will require. Uh, the correct tool in order to get them back in. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use a socket um, and what we'll do we will start at exhaust cylinder one, um, cylinder one exhaust and we'll put a socket on and then we'll give it a good whack and um, what will happen is um, it will allow us to free off the um, the collets, um, it, it, if we hit it hard enough, it should compress the valves enough that the collets pop out and um, it, it will allow us to remove the valve. Now, um, there's been a bit of trial and error on this um, and sometimes, yeah, you can actually just, yeah. Okay, so what I, well, I've put my little magnet down somewhere. What I want to do is, with my little magnet, pop that down the inside of the socket and then give the socket a little push. And here we go. You can see what I've done. One of the little collets has come out and the other one is still in there. So what I need to do is recover the same the other one in the same manner. And there we go. There is the other collet. Now what I need to do is I need to get the get the box those are the inlet ones. Exhaust one, 
pop the collets in there. And there is the valve retainer. Now, what we're doing here is all we're doing is pushing down the valve retainer against the spring. We're not pushing the valve down, so we're not going to cause any damage uh, by pushing the valve out or anything like that. We're not pushing the valve. We're literally just, um, just pushing the valve retainer. And then in here, we've got the inner and outer springs. And there they go. Pop them in as well. And there is the valve. Now, if we... Push on the valve now. There she comes. And there is one of the exhaust valves. And there you can see the little slot at the top of the valve that the collets sit into, just like so. Um, and there we go. So, uh, basically, the way this works, you would have your valve springs like so. You've got your retainer there, and you've got your two, your two collets. I'll only put one on for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, and there they are, like so. And obviously, the uh, collets are held in place against a, by spring pressure pushing against the the, uh, the valve retainer, basically, and that's what stops them. Um, coming out so yeah that's uh that is valve number one out so what i need to do now is i need to do that for the other 15. um as i said we we will struggle to get the i mean we may be able to get them in using that method but it'll be it'll be a pain so what i'll do i will get another valve uh, a valve spring compressing tool um, that will fit this head uh, for us to install it because it is a damn sight easier. So what I'll do, I will get all of the other 15 valves out and then I'll bring you back. Right, as you can see, um, all the valves are removed and they're all in, uh, in their little boxes. Um, you know, all segregated into their individual valves and yeah we're, uh, we're all good now underneath um underneath here uh we we have the valve stem oil seal which i need to remove come on they they, they do stick on there we go there's one um obviously we'll replace all of them to be fair with a gasket head kit um uh, i think you you get those anyway and um, so obviously we'll uh, we'll replace all 16 of them i'll uh, i'll get the other ones out later on i don't need to uh, bore you with that um what i could do is put the lid on this and that is safely stored now um i've got the uh, i've got the luxury of having these neat little um cylinder head stands um so i'll leave the cylinder head on there for now but what i want to do uh well, what I want to wrap up in this in this episode is I want to take the barrels off, um, take the rotor off and the pickup off, and I think we'll probably uh, yeah the chain will come out as well, um, and I think we'll take the this water the uh, this water flange um, off the back of this because that is toast and it's going in the bin um, as I showed the other day. I've got a brand new one um, to put up. Well, it's not brand new; it's second hand, but I've made it look brand new. The little look of pain that was all it took. Okay, so. For this, um, should just be a case of just, there we go, there will be some dowels under here, give it a little, just give it a little tug and she'll come up, and if I give it a little push against the pistons, the middle two pistons are out. bit of water coming out and there we are uh, yeah all, all the water coming out now obviously I'll have to uh, clean all that up later um, and as you can see look at the color of it um, I'm guessing the previous owner of this this bike didn't understand the concept of demineralized or deionized water and it's probably used tap water to be perfectly honest 
Um, here's the chain. We can recover this gasket now. There we are, that's the base gasket. Um, naturally, we'll put a brand new one of those on uh, when we come to reassemble. But yeah, here's the uh, here's all the pistons. Um, what I do want to do now is take the rotor off now. If I try and back them off with a breaker bar or something, all it's going to do is just going to spin the crank, but my uh, dugger dugger should make light work of it. There we go. Take the rotor off. Um, We'll put that in there in a box. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to um, take the the timing pickup off. I think they are are they eight mil? They look like eight mil. Yes, they are. and then this should come off and there we go um, underneath here underneath this boot if I can get the boot off come on Is the time and pick up. Okay, I think uh, what we've done in this episode is uh, we've achieved quite a bit. Um, the yeah, the uh, yeah, everything, everything looks really, really good actually. To be fair, um, once you uh, once you dive inside, um, it's not uh, it's not too bad at all. Um, the chain. Uh, you can't actually get it off because this little part of the casting prevents you from taking it off the end of the uh, end of the gear so that'll come off later anyway guys what i'll do i'll wrap up here because i've got a bit of cleaning up to do because there's coolant all over the place um ever since i split the uh since i split the barrels off uh, so i'll clean all that up um, and we'll call it a day but yeah i think we've uh, we've achieved quite a lot in this one um but i'll uh, i'll hope to see you all for the next one guys you take care bye bye now